Marcus? Yes. So um, I'm just going to use the student handbook. Um, it's 7.4.8. Um, the big problem is not you going in checking for the fire alarm or the fire smoke detectors. But I spoke to Dr. O yesterday, and I said this, and I'll say it every day um, until I leave. You use that as a right to start shooting from that. So you start off saying, OK, we're going to make sure that no students are in the room. You did that. But you didn't just stop there. You kept going a step further. And you were like, OK, he has a beer bottle in his room, and there's alcohol. Let's take that out. Um, that's just one instance. Um, and then you also, and so after that, I heard multiple of those incidents. And so I called two fire inspectors um, in our district, that's Inspector Rose and Inspector Colon. Um, and they said that if, if I wanted to, I could contact the lawyer and see where to go from there. Because using what you have here and using what you did yesterday was not lawful. Because you're supposed to stop at why you went in the room. But you used a fake fire alarm or a fake fire drill to go through students' personal property. Well, it's not a fake fire drill. You're required well, not by a fake law to complete six unannounced <coughs> fire drills. So two in the summer, two in the fall, fall, two in the spring. We are required to just stay within our appropriate guidelines and put, put favorable with our fire department, you, I mean, by law. Yeah, so but then so it's not fake. It's not like I went into the lobby and I was like, let me pull the fire alarm so we and Gabrielle can go look for problems in the students' rooms. Like, okay. that is not the intention ever. Okay. So we don't, don't, let's not harp on the word fake, okay, I'll take the word fake out, but you didn't stop where you started, you just kept going a step further, and then when I spoke to Dr. O, she wasn't aware that this was happening, and that, that means your, your staff is not on the same page, so you're all doing different things and taking different measures in different areas, so if you're going in for an inspection, okay, what we're used to is the red light sending out an email, putting up Big posters, small posters, already also having conversations with their floor saying, hi, there's going to be an inspection um, on this day, um, just so you know. So that is a health and safety inspection. So exactly. No, I would, I'm not okay. just saying that. Yeah. yeah I just want to call it But if you're, if you're going for inspections, that's the inspection. Mm -hmm. But you, you went in as a fire drill, and you took it a step further to, to use a fire drill after you evacuated students out of the building to go through their personal stuff, which or your property, whatever you want to call it, um, and hold them accountable for things that you were not in the handbook, going by the handbook, you weren't supposed to be in the room in the first place, and you kept going and you went to their things. So if, if you hadn't been in the handbook, you wouldn't have known these things were in the room. I mean, if you hadn't been in the room, you wouldn't have known these things were in the room in the first place. But if you read the handbook, it says, these are the reasons your room will be searched. When a police or government police or government official has a warrant to search the room, a college official will be present. When repairs are needed beyond what can be completed by the CMSB facility staff, a college employee will always accompany a non-CMSB repairman. When a college official has a good reason to believe that an occupant is not in compliance with law or college regulation, or when a disruption has taken place. When danger to life, health, or property is in reasonable fear. None of those things occurred yesterday. But you still use this to search for so where, where do you make that connection to make that okay? Uh, can you go ahead? Can you define search? Search when you say, okay, I'm in the room. There's no student in the room, or okay, there's a student in the room. Come out. No, you stood in there, and well, I'm not gonna say you guys. Someone stood in there, and they're like, okay, there is an alcohol bottle right there. There is a phone right there. So that's one. That's one incident. Or when you open the drawers and move things around in the room. Because okay. there were wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish my okay. there were students that said their things have been moved around and without someone else doing it, things don't just move around the room. So that is where I say there was a search in the room. Two rooms were searched for marijuana. So other than that Had you not been in the room, you wouldn't know there's marijuana in the room. You I'm not gonna discuss our protocol. But had you not no, this is this is the protocol here. Had you not been in the room, you would have not have known there was marijuana in the room. I don't care if so marijuana, so we're checking alcohol. Your, okay. So I'd like to take one step back mm -hmm. uh, and talk about the reason for which you brought us to each of those rooms, right? Yeah. It's the concern that when we have all of these fire alarms, the building wide alarms, that we're noticing that 
students are not evacuated from the buildings. And we can see that when we are walking out of the buildings ourselves, right? So part of the drill is to, or the fire alarm, is to actively go through and make sure that folks are evacuated from the building. That is where in the end of the college handbook, and that is actual law, right? Tampering with fire safety equipment is written in the handbook, and we know the students do it, and it's also against federal law. Right. So part of the drill was to make sure that our buildings are up to the problems. And then making sure that our students are actually following our student handbook. So within that, I think it's the fourth bullet, we do have reasonable, uh, good reason to go through these rooms to make sure that folks are in compliance. Now, when we see marijuana in a room, yes, we're going to search it. Because that also falls under the <coughs> Does that make sense? Guys, just so I'm not like this isn't something that's funny or should be a show. This is me actually trying to say it right. So let's take it serious and stay in that. I would encourage you to think about that fourth bullet in the sense that the fire safety system is a life system, a life safety system. Okay. And so when it is not operating correctly because students are tampering with it or covering their smoke detectors or hanging things from their sprinklers, that is the violation. That is reason in which to go into a room. You sound, you, you don't agree, I yeah. disagree. Okay. But I would like you to think about that from the flip side. It, it does fall under that fourth bullet in terms of it is a life safety hybrid. And I'm pretty sure, read me the fourth bullet again. Yes, the, the fourth bullet, when danger to life and health or property is reasonable, they fear. Right. And so, as we're seeing, 20 students come out of alumni at 8 o'clock at night for a fire drill, or 25 students come out of Spelman at 4 in the afternoon, we're recognizing that people are not taking this seriously. And there is then, therefore, if this were a real emergency, a threat to life and property, we're less worried about your things. Your things are your things, and I think we all agree that our things can be replaced in the case of a true emergency. But the most important thing is that we secure your safety on this campus. Okay, so I just think that moving forward that the whole staff understands the purpose, one. Next, the whole staff understands what's happening. Because in discussion, I was told that you were checking for a body, if there was a body in the room, you were supposed to remove the body from the room, and that was it, the door closed. But that's not what you're saying now, and that's not what was happening yesterday. So if we can just get a little bit more transparency and the truth, throughout the whole process, I think things would, we wouldn't have this <coughs> conversation now if there was just, if, we, if students felt that the office was being transparent. So why don't we do this moving forward? Why don't we invite some of the members of student government to participate in the process with us? Is that okay. something you would all be willing to do? I mean, it will yes. mean committing a couple of hours on an afternoon to walk the buildings with us and help us with that, but I want to restore the fact that we want you to be part of this conversation again. It's how do we prevent an emergency so if it's the fact that you want to work with us and you want to walk with us, whether it's members of the Residence Life Committee or the Security Committee or the Facilities Committee or just people who have a general interest in that, I would invite you to. And we're happy to do that next time. Um, and maybe that will help <coughs> students feel more assured, okay, we're going in with the following in mind and then we're following that and this is happening. And it will also be, I think, eye-opening to you to say to your peers, like, dude, get out of the building. What are you doing in the building still? Like, this is serious. Peter? Um, I get 100% what you're saying, especially with the last bullet point and the danger to life on the property. Property is risen in fear. I feel like um, that does cover a lot of gray areas. So, like, when the signs are updated to the code counter, we should elaborate a little for example, when fire drills. So, students can understand like, that serious as well. Also, um, the next part of the handbook says, in all but the last case, reasonable effort will be made to notify the resident in advance and to have him or her be present. If room has been entered when the student cannot be notified, he or she will be informed as soon as possible thereafter. I understand it's a fire drill and nobody should be in the room, but I wasn't notified that my room was walked into because of fire drill. Everybody should be something else because that's what it says in 7.4.8. So that's a lie. Well, it says, so, it, it says everything about that last bullet. We're thinking fire drills and fire safety and life safety fall under that last bullet. We're not going to call you, especially. No, we're not assuming that yet, because that, well, that is covered in 
gray area, you might get your cloud of money. Students still don't know that. We just know that in children, not everybody else. Is. And I actually have an email sitting in my drafts right now to go out to the residential population. I thought it was important that we were able to hear the concerns presented by you so that we could follow up on them greatly with the residential population. So let's add that to the action list for next time this happens. One, we're going to invite you to participate in the process with you. Two, we're going to send a notice immediately following the completion of the inspection to all students to say this has happened. This is that you'll be notified if you were found in violation of not evacuating or tampering with the fire safety system. Or whatever we set as the outline for items in which we're looking for. Yes? Does that seem fair? Like, 
talks about. Um, it happens both once a semester and then at the closing right before the breaks, right? So when we start speaking the halls for folks to go for like Thanksgiving break, uh, winter break, spring break, that type of thing. Um, we also conduct a health and safety inspection just to make sure that also your trash is taken out so that when you come back it's stink, uh, that type of thing. Um, but outside of that, that's completely separate from the uh, five rules. Okay, I just feel like it would make everybody a little more comfortable and a little less, you know, uppity because I know there were a lot of concerns about yesterday. You know, if it's more <coughs> out there and people know about it, it's less of a, oh my god, why did they do this? Oh my god, I can't stand res like more of a, okay, I know they have to do this. And it's not like, personally, it's not like, like you know, said, I have nothing to worry about with it, but I know other people do. It's realistic in the college, we know this, but maybe it would make them a little more comfortable to be on the same page with you guys because really that's all we want. We want communication. So it's real good. Uh, I do believe that fire safety is very important. I can understand why we felt it was uh, important for it to be more of a surprise inspection so you can catch them in the act of covering the fire drills, but, sorry, fire alarm, uh, staying inside. But I also believe that by searching the rooms, and searching is a loose term because you can go into a room and search a room with your eyes very quickly and find, you know, violations. I know people that even had their candles taken, being they're not supposed to be on campus, but still, you know, that's still searching a room. But does this fire drill uh, show that we should be more worried about our own safety or that we should be more worried about our belongings being searched and our stuff being taken? Because now I feel like every time the alarm goes off, which it goes off fairly often, especially I lived here last semester, I said I spent you know, a good 10 nights outside in the quad to in the morning living in alumni. So is everyone gonna go from wanting to be outside as you would hope, or to frantically running around their room trying to cover up all their violations so they don't get written up, and worrying that people are gonna go through their belongings because despite what you said about uh, people's rooms not being searched, I know people that know their rooms had been searched, their drawers were left open, uh, and I saw the rooms go through them and searched. In fact, uh, my girlfriend was on the fifth floor of Mastro at the end, which means her room was one of the first ones to be open, and uh, she was walked in on while she was changing. No warning, her coat was punched in and they walked in, and she left on time, but her room was still opened up almost immediately. So I think, that you need to find maybe a different solution. You know, not being disrespectful, I do believe it's important, you know, especially if there's fire and you have no one that's hurt, that's, a, that's an amazing thing. But you can't do one thing to help one cause, but also do another thing, because you're trying to show them not to do this, this one thing, which is bad, covering the fire alarm, staying inside. But you also violated everyone's rights in the building, like going through all their stuff taking out stuff. I know people that had, you know, stuff that they shouldn't have on campus taking, like you said, marijuana, stuff and like that, but also candles and other silly violations that are on campus. So I feel like now you're just showing that every time the fire alarm goes off, whether it's a drill or an actual fire, <coughs> not forbid, they're going to want to stay inside the extra two minutes to shuffle off everything they can into a private bin before uh, Mr. Lee or whoever is doing the rounds at the time comes and knocks on the door next to me. I mean, I think it's important to think that when that fire alarm goes off, you have to think about your own safety. And so I hope that it's not going to be one step forward, two steps back in this situation where everybody's worried about collecting their belongings and taking them with them. Because again, the purpose of when that fire alarm goes off is to get you out of the building as quickly and as safely as we can. The last thing any of us want to do here, or your peers want to do, or your RAs want to do, is worry about did they get out? Where are they? How can I account for them? Or, oh my god, there's X number of students injured because we couldn't get the building evacuated fast enough. Or, there's going to be 100 students displaced now because we have that much damage to a building. We want you to get out, and that's it. Like, we don't, again, we don't want to have to go through your stuff. We don't want to be searching your rooms. Like, we just want you to recognize this is an important topic, and we need everyone in the community to take it seriously. <coughs> Yeah, I just, I just feel like you should maybe figure out a different solution to this. I just feel like you, you depleted your trust with the students in a sense by doing this to them. You know, now 
everyone, I mean, I was in the buildings after everyone got to go back in. I know that you guys weren't. Alumni was the mass show was the first one searched. I believe the next one searched was, uh, was Marilyn. Sorry, not searched, though. The next, the next, yeah, searched for the fire alarm coverings. And everyone was, was very much not happy with what happened. And I feel like, you know, you need the students to trust to, to help achieve your goals of fire safety. Which is again why we're here, because we got a lot of feedback yesterday, and DeMarcus reached out and asked for us to be here so we could have that conversation about how do we move forward and what changes are we going to make so that we can collectively move forward in furthering this topic. So, yes. so I hear you. Yes. And, and that's part of us trying to rebuild the trust of students to say, we're here and we're listening and we understand we're unhappy and let's talk about how we're going to do this and do it better um, next time where you all feel comfortable and we're achieving hopefully the same goals. <coughs> Yeah, because I, I have talked to a lot of students too about this, and the majority fear is uh, is that this could happen whenever, you know, because it's a fire alarm. They're going to come in, and if you're still in your room, you're going to get a fine, but you have to leave as soon as the fire alarm goes off, and at any moment, you can have your room searched with, you know, just your eyes. Not a search, as you say, but still, you know, if you're supposed to up and leave the room when the fire alarm goes off, and you have a small violation out or, or an item you're not supposed to have, they can lose that, or a small item can lead to your whole room being searched and seized. I feel like that's a big Please problem. Please keep in mind, though, a violation of college policy is still a violation of college policy, and so you have to take some responsibility for those of you who are residents and understanding the student handbook and the policies and expectations we set forth for our community. Violations are violations, and so we, we of course, are going to address them. It's not to say that maybe something happened yesterday that we noticed that we would not have noticed if something different had happened in this sort of the series of events. But violations are still violations, and we don't want that on this campus, OK? So please keep that in mind, though, too. Like, we're talking about this because people feel like it was unfair. And majority of you have nothing to worry about. We went into your room. We noticed you were not there. Your smoke detector was not covered, and we moved on. For those that did affect, though, it's because there was a violation of college policy above and beyond, yes, the reason we went into the room, but it still needs to be addressed. If we don't permit drugs on the campus, we don't permit alcohol in areas where people are not 21, we do not permit animals, candles, Christmas lights, you, you name it. There's a whole list in the student handbook, and so if you're not familiar with those things, I would encourage you to go back to that student handbook because it's still a violation of the college policy. It does not fit what we are looking for in our community. We want to build our community in a positive way, and this maybe was not the right way to go about it, and that's fine, and we're here, and we're going to move forward and try to figure out how to do that correctly going forward. But it does not negate the fact that people broke college policies yesterday, and so therefore they will be held responsible for breaking those policies, and there will be consequences for those. It's a small number. It's, I, I can't speak to if it's anybody in this room or not, but it is smaller than the number of students who didn't evacuate and two smoke detectors were covered. I mean, we're talking, we searched two rooms. That's four people involved, if that at most. I mean, it might even be less than that if we're talking singles. So please keep that in mind. Um, in the same way that we're going to address a, a violation of health policy, if we walk by and your door's open and we notice it. Okay? So it, the fact that we still need to be familiar with that, those policies, we need to be respectful of our community and adhere to those policies. And in terms of the fire safety and life safety, we will continue to have a conversation to move forward in a way where we are meeting you and having a conversation about how to do this in a way where everybody feels comfortable going forward. I think some of the suggestions were really good today in terms of involving you more, inviting you to participate, sending out notification immediately following it being done so everyone knows that it was completed, but unless they get follow-up communications, then we should expect that it's not going. If they're not going to hear anything further about it, it's because they weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. And any other, you know, any other suggestions that come our way? Dorman's going to be the last question. Wait, so it was a fire inspection or fire drill? It was a fire drill. So the whole point was to evacuate. Correct. So if you opened up a room and you saw a smoking bag and you took it down. Correct. Yes. What else can cause a fire besides, uh, besides, what else is a violation besides a smoking bag open? Good question. So for the life safety systems, it's covering or tampering with your smoke detector. It's hanging or tampering with your sprinkler system. So you don't hang hangers off of your, your pipes or anything like that in your room, no tapestries. Um, 
say is people who are facing <coughs> consequences with them bad when they mm -hmm. are people with legs facing the same consequences because that's a fire hazard too, correct? <coughs> No, so the covering of a smoke detector and tampering with it is actually federal law, whereas the guideline for the college policy for fire safety includes all of the things like Christmas lights and tapestries and all of those items. But if you're tampering with the actual device itself, again, I wish Marcus said the fire marshal said giving this information yesterday, it's, it's a federal offense. No, I knew that. It, well, okay, so maybe you knew that going in so they didn't have to reiterate that conversation. So that's why the sanctioning is different for one versus the other. And you guys are the judge of that? Who sanctions if someone has a smoke detector or someone who has a... Well, internally, you're in violation of the college policy for either. It's just a different policy. So if you have Christmas lights, you're, you're under, you're violating the right to <coughs> policies because, again, it's sort of a fire safety guideline. If you're tampering with your actual equipment, it's a fire safety violation. But you're, you're handling that. This time, we are handling if the fire marshal comes in, though, we defer to him on handling it. Which Doesn't is why as well. Hmm? Doesn't apply as well. That's no. That's why I'm confused. Why it's, it's like if you're 21 and live in alumni, like it's a dry building, right? Okay. So we would hold you responsible for having a beer, let's say, in alumni because that's our policy. Versus like, if you're not 21, that's illegal. Does that make sense? I don't. No, you look no. out. No. It's all right. I just wanted to see if a person who, because you got at the end of the day, you're both fire hazard, correct? One is, one is a federal offense of tampering with your fire safety. But I'm saying federal, isn't that dealt by government? But yes. you're handling it. So I'm saying if you're handling the person with the lights, should, wouldn't they face the same consequences with the tapestry, the candles, everything? One's against the law, one's against school That's policy. Against school policy. So, yes. One yes, they deal with that on the law level, the other they deal with on the school policy level. I think that, yeah. Okay, um, thank you so much. Um, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to walk into the office at any time. Email them. Email the Marcus Um I know it's been a long meeting. For any announcements, just email them to Alex. And she's not even here to record. But the next thing for new business is student leader of the week. Um, Um, so I have, uh, the student leader of the week, I don't have your item with me, but I have you in my mind. Um, so this student was a student who, um, each member of our EC saw working like crazy to get ready for Mount Madness. They are on the three dance teams. They, um, have above a 3.5 GPA for midterms while doing those three dance teams, and they are doing amazing. They have been at almost every SGA meeting with a smile on their face and been active and participating. So this week, our student leader of the week is going to be Jasmine Phillips. Thank you.